What's up everybody? This is part three of the head gasket install on the LML 6.6 uh, .6 Duramax. We've been working on it now for probably about an hour and it is almost 100 degrees today outside so it is pretty warm here in South Carolina but the thing that I've already done today was I removed the feed line from the exhaust manifold to the turbo already and then I pulled the heat shield off on the driver side from the same pipe and I've unbolted it from the uh, exhaust manifold on that side. Uh, both of these are going to be held in with six uh, 13 millimeter six point socket uh, hex sockets I guess you say and I'll show it to you right now this is it right here this goes to the manifold this goes to the turbo and to get this off I did have to take this EGR coolant pipe off we're going to try to get a block off plate for them for this one because this isn't needed anymore and we can actually bypass all this for the guy but to take this off there was a 13 millimeter right here and then here is the EGR block off plate that he has on there and this portion was bolted to that but like I said we're going to try to get a block off plate for him just to make the install a little easier and this is the heat shield that went on the driver's side it is a little bit of a pain to get off. There are four 10 millimeter bolts. Mine are rusted on pretty good. Let's see if I can get in here and kind of show you everything. So it's a tight little area right here. And I just used a 13 millimeter wrench and got in here and used like a breaker bar uh, or you put another wrench on it and broke them loose because those are pretty tight especially with exhaust going through and there's a bracket that goes right here it has two 10 millimeter little like cap nuts on there and you take those off and that bracket will come off and you can get right in here but the bottom right I guess you could say one on the engine side uh, I did have to get it from underneath and it is a little tight due to the oil filter so if you're going to do this job go ahead and remove the oil filter just so you have a little bit more clearance up against the transmission and I think we took the fuel line brackets off there's one right here I don't know if you can see it Got my fingers on it and it bolts right behind the steering shaft and then there's a nut that is on the I think it's second one up bell housing bolt you take that off and they are both 13 millimeters and then you can move the fuel lines around and see how they move but we are working on getting the turbo off now I do have the three bolts left on the back of the turbo that go from the driver's side feed line and we're going to try to get those off now. They are a little bit of a pain to get to the bottom one just because of the turbo feed line, I guess, like protection cover, I guess you could call that. Uh, it is recessed down in there, so it is a little bit difficult. But what I'm going to do is get my 13 millimeter wrench on there with either like a little pry bar or another wrench on it just to break it loose because these are really tight on this and once I get that off I will try to show you where the turbo mounting bolts are and there is a feed line for the oil return it has two I think 13 millimeter nuts on it you will have to take those off but it is kind of under the driver's side uh, downpipe I guess you say that but it's like right underneath there so you can't get one of the nuts off until you get those feed lines off but let me get on here and try to get this off for you. And once I do that, I'll show you what it all looks like. So I've gotten quite a bit further now. I did get the turbo off and I got the valve cover off on the passenger side along with the intake manifold. And to take the turbo off, the lower three bolts are 15 millimeters. And to get to that front one, that's right there. Hold on, let me get a better view for you. Uh, 
So to get this front one, you're gonna to have to use a swivel to get down around the inlet portion of the turbo. And here are some of the gaskets that are on the banjo fittings. That's what they look like. But as I was saying, you're gonna to have to use a swivel and an extension to get down into this bolt right here because it is kind of under the intake portion of the turbo or the cold side and as you can see also I did get the intake manifold off to do this I had to take two of the feed lines off they like run over top one goes right here and then one is actually one of the lines that go in to the uh, fuel lines uh, this is actually one of them if I can get it to come around so this is the one that houses the fuel line I think it may even be the return can't remember yeah I think it's the return line so you can see the hose right there but you have to remove this 10 millimeter this 10 millimeter that one and then this one is on the injection pump and then you can actually remove both the feed and return line to the injection pump and to get the intake that were the lower intake manifold off you're going to have 13 millimeter bolts and two nuts you're going to have one two three four five six seven eight nine bolts and two nuts but to clear the injection pump right here you're going to have to use a inverted torx or an e-torx to take this out if you're not removing the injection pump and I'm trying to see what i did with my ratchet because it does have it on there and i'm going to show you the turbo and the intake manifold here in just a second but there's two 13 millimeter studs also that feeds the oil return on the back of the engine and when you go to lift this up make sure that you're careful with that line and you don't over bend it or anything or break it off just because they're not really that cheap and they're you know it's been taking a while to get parts in too but let me show you the turbo and the feed line so here is the turbo like i said you're gonna have three mountain locations right here and then here's your oil feed right there it does have a flex fitting on here but you just don't want to over flex it because uh, it can bend and you can break it this is a coolant line right here i did have to take that off of it as well to get it to come out but other than that that's everything on the turbo and then on the intake manifold portion just do not forget about the bolt inside of the intake because a lot of people tend to forget that one because it can be covered up with carbon and soot and all that stuff and it'd be kind of hard to see and you can break these intakes pretty easy luckily they're not crazy expensive you can find them uh, used pretty much anywhere you want to and here are your valve covers this is your upper valve cover right here and they're all five millimeter Allen Torx. I mean Allen heads, I don't know why I said Torx, but they're Allens. And the valve covers are marked left and right, as you can see from the center location. But the uppers have the grommets on them and the lowers do not have grommets on them. And on the uppers, you're gonna have pretty much one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, like 18 bolts for the upper and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen you'll have about 17 18 on the lower as well but that's the intakes i mean the valve covers off i do have the rocker arm assembly off as well and that uses a 14 millimeter to remove the rocker arm assembly and i'm going to try to pull the head with the exhaust manifold on just to make it a little easier i know it's going to be pretty heavy doing that but it gives me another like grab location that i can grab the head onto and i can actually uh, use that to pry the head off of the engine too if in case it's stuck 
but I'm about to start to remove the head bolts on this. You're going to have two different styles. There'll be a 17 millimeter uh, 12 point, and then I do not know what size torch that is. Let me check. I'm thinking it's like a like a T30 or something. Yeah. So the Torx is a T30 on those upper little ones, and then the bigger bolts are gonna be 17 millimeter 12 points. As you can see, I still have the bolts in the rock arm assembly, and I laid the push rods and the rocker arm pads in order in which they come off of, just in case they are specific. I do not believe they are, but I just like to leave them in their original locations just because they already have a wear pattern associated with each rock arm onto the wear pad and same goes with the push rods but uh, I think all the intake and exhaust are the same and same goes for the uh, rocker arm pads but I'm going to keep pulling everything off once I get the head off I will bring you back and show you uh, what the head looks like off and see if we can see if this side had a head gasket leak on this side or if it was the other side but as soon as I get it off, I'll be right back. Cylinder head is off on the passenger side. And if you look, it doesn't look like any of them on this side was really leaking at all. Even looked at the gasket, didn't see anywhere. The dial pin was stuck in it on this one. I'm going to have to pull that out before I take it to the machine shop. And I did pull it off with the exhaust manifold on. And it was actually, wasn't too bad as far as weight. I mean, I lifted it right up, no problem. With the head being aluminum, you know, that makes a big difference too. But one of the studs didn't come out, the other one did. There'll be uh, eight bolts or six bolts, two studs. One of the studs was right here, and then we had this one. This one didn't come out, that one did. But we're going to leave that in there anyway, just because I don't want to take a chance of stripping it or messing up any of the threads or anything. And they should be able to do everything they need with that still in place. And if they do need to take it out, I tell them I can do it if they need me to. But we're going to pull this right here out, the uh, dial pin on this, just so uh, they don't have to. Uh, but here's the top of it. Like I said, I may get them to hot tank it for me. And this is it with the head off as you can see everything looks good I am going to clean all the coolant out of that cylinder before we put everything back together and I'm going to actually wipe it down cover this up until they get finished with the heads but while they're working on the heads we will be taking the CP3 out of this and doing the conversion because uh, right now will be the perfect time to do this. I just have the driver's side head to take off. And once we get that off, we can take them both to the machine shop. And it's pretty much the same thing as the passenger side. You may have like another connector or two over there, like a ground strap from the firewall to the back of the head also. But uh, everything else should fairly be the same, even injectors. And I did show you the glow plugs already as one of them was stuck in that side and we will we'll, when we take the head off I'm expecting the second cylinder on the driver's side to be the cause of the head gasket leak but like I said I'm gonna get to pulling all this stuff off and as soon as I get it off I'll show y'all so I got the heads off of it now and judging from these cylinders they look a little worse than the passenger side and I'm suspecting that that is the side that was leaking coolant because all the injectors, the tips of them were rusted up completely and one of the uh, glow plugs was stuck in there and I had to knock it out. And I've plugged up all the holes on here with some rags or shop towels. As you can see, that way nothing gets into the engine that way. And I'm gonna cover the head uh, ports up and where the lifters are and all that. I'm going to cover all that up with some plastic and put some rags and stuff down on the cylinder so nothing gets in there. But this is pretty much where I wanted to get to today. And I achieved that. It was a little bit of a 
task doing it with the cab still on it, but we got it off. I just wanted to prove that you could do it. Now, when you're removing the driver's side head, this last stud over here, or bolt, you're gonna have to pull it out with the head just because you don't have enough room to pull it out because as you can see, it hits right there whenever you try to move it or remove it, I should say. But I'm gonna hop down, I'm gonna show you the cylinder head because I do have to take the exhaust manifold off and the ground strap. The ground strap goes right here and I just removed it with the head instead of trying to reach around it and remove that. So here's the head. Doesn't look too bad. Like I said, the head gasket didn't really look too bad either, but like, all the injectors were rusted and all that stuff. Here's the ground strap right here. It, it looks like it uses either a 14 or 15 millimeter. And then I'm going to remove the exhaust manifold. All of these are 14 millimeters, like I said before. I'm going to remove that and then put up everything for the day and take them to the machine shop first thing in the morning because it is about 6 o'clock now. But this is going to probably conclude this video. Here's my bucket of bolts and everything labeled just for ease of convenience when, whenever I put it back together. But like I said, this is going to end this video. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And if there's anything that I may have left out that you really needed to know or would like to know, please comment in the comment section or you can email me either one and I'll get to it as soon as possible. But whenever we get ready to pull that injection pump off, I'm going to do that while the heads are at the machine shop. And I will do a video on doing that as well. And I'll do that tomorrow for everybody. But like I said, if you enjoyed the video, hit all the buttons. And until next time, y'all have a great day.